morning 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 right here we go again and uh, what we're going to do today well i've got the bike in the shade of the house down the little alleyway there to try and keep some of this heat off me because it's too bloody hot and i've uh, i've got my desert wellies on as well so uh what we're going to do right couple of little jobs nothing to get too excited about uh clutch it works fine, nothing wrong with it, it works, you pull it in, you change gear, you let it out, off you go. Um, it's just feeling a little bit graunchy, so I'm going to take the cable off, I'm going to try and lubricate that, completely take the cable off. Uh, I will I'll slap a bit of uh, lube on that thing as well, see if that's the problem. Uh, while I've got it off, I'm going to paint that lever black. Uh, why are you going to paint it black, Bertie? Because that was silver. Well, the new one that's coming isn't. It's black. So we'll paint that one black to match. Ready. Um, it's only sat in black paint. It's probably going to wear off anyway, but we'll uh, we'll slap it on. It will just look a little bit better for uh, a short period of time. So, yeah, clutch cable. Uh, there was something else. What was it? don't know. That will come to me. Anyway, let me get this set up in a stand and we'll uh, we'll crack on and uh, we'll get that uh, cable off. Cheers. Right, let's make a start. I'm sure there's uh, not many videos on uh, YouTube as to how to take a clutch cable off because nobody really wants to know because it's easy but I'm going to do it differently because I'm going to take the lever off anyway I'm just going to do it by disconnecting the lever I mean, normally you would um, there's an adjustment there further down on the cable so you'd back the cable right off on that adjuster and then disconnect it at the lever here with that little slot but as I'm taking the lever off anyway, drop me nuts. Yeah, um, we'll do it the easy way. Pop that on my floor storage unit. There we go. Simple as that, and um, we will disconnect that cable, then uh, yeah, we can um, rub that down and give it a quick coat of paint just to make it match the other one when it finally gets here. Uh, right, that rubber, will that come off? No, it doesn't make no difference, they can stay on. Right, now we need to disconnect down the bottom end there. So, we need to disconnect it in there now. And because we've got all the tension off the cable, that should, in theory, be an absolute doddle. Never ever ever say something is an absolute doddle before you've attempted to do it. Because <laughs> you're setting yourself up. Right, but there you go, that's come out easy enough. Um, that's a little bit tricky to wiggle out of there. But out it will come, and there we go. So. Uh, get out your bugger there you go right we've just got to feed that cable through now
what's that feel like? Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little bit graunchy. But we'll try and get some lube down that. We'll lube up the bit at the engine end and we'll just see if that, uh, that feels any better. Right, WD-40. 40 in the face, lovely. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get any of this down here. But if not, I have got a cable oiler. I'll try and get the cable oiler on it. No, that's just going to go everywhere. Let me grab my cable oiler, guys, and see if we can do it properly. Alright, I don't know if you guys have seen one of these before. But basically you clump, you back that off. You clump it on the cable and then it traps the inner and the outer cables together. And then when you squirt um, lubricant in that hole, it's got nowhere to go other than down the cable. They're, um, they're sort of, they sort of work. You can see what I'm doing. So yeah, we will we'll clump it on the cable like that. Clump it down. And then in theory just, just get the straw of my can which don't fit. Yeah. There you go, and that is... I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's run all down the cable there on that first section. So we now I know, <coughs> at least on that first section, I've got WD-40 running all the way down. nice and smooth. Well, it wasn't too bad anyway. Uh, with this part, I'm probably not going to be able to do that quite as successfully because that won't, that's too wide to go in the oiler. But being wide, it means we can get a can of WD down there. What I want to see in a perfect world is WD-40 dripping out the bottom of that cable. But I don't know if that's going to be the case. Actually, let me try and get the cable oiler on this end. That might work. Back that off a bit. going to work. Okay, so again, straw in the hole, the oh, word misses. Okay. And again, that's coming out the bottom of that cable now, it's got nowhere to go other than down the cable. So, that cable is, oh that feels much better, yeah that's thoroughly lubricated, so let's clean my mess up, or the wifey comes on in, oh, this is Bodget sees me and tells me off, it's WD-40 stain, <coughs> actually I uh, I got in trouble recently because uh, I'm actually a HGV driver and uh, the black grease that goes on the coupling of the tractor unit, the, uh, the what they call the fifth wheel, I managed to get some of that on my boots, get it all the way home and trample it onto the wife's beige bedroom carpet. So I was in serious bother. but. Uh, I actually got in my shed some stuff which you will have heard of, it's engine degrees, they're called gunk. It's the proper stuff. And I thought, I wonder, 
and I've got myself a cloth. Good liberal of dosing of gunk into the uh, beige carpet and it just lifted it all out absolutely perfectly. So there you go. Another useless top tip from Bertie Budget. Right, <coughs> anyway, I need to get that cable fed back through. Uh, refitting is a reversal of fit, uh, removing, so we'll uh, yeah, we'll get that done and uh, then we'll see about getting that lever painted. Cheers guys. Right, we, uh, we've got the clutch cable routed back through. Uh, as you can see, we've um, painted up the lever. It's hanging on Mrs. Bodgett's washing line over there, drying, black paint. Um, it's gloss, it's all I had, but it'll do. Uh, right, I'm going uh, to give a demonstration of how cheap I am. Now, on this fork, that one there, bone dry, no problem. This one, absolutely minute weep on that seal. Very, very little, but, you know, it, it may want a fork seal on this side, and you wouldn't change one, you'd do them as a pair anyway and change the oil and what have you but I am uh, I'm a cheapskate and I'll, I'm always looking for yeah let's, let's just say if money don't need spending I won't spend it so uh, there is a thing on the marketplace called a seal mate I believe it's called a bit of fiver piece of plastic you can uh, shove it down there clean the forks there and, it, and often 50-50 chance it will stop it leaking so I want to try that but I'm not going to pay a fiver for a seal mate so let me show you how I'm going to try and get around that just a sec right okay then so the seal mate um, it's a piece of plastic and it looks something like that but that is a picture of a seal mate that I've printed out on a uh, piece of A4 paper and it's about the size as well 13 centimeters so what we are going to do I told you it was cheap let's cut that out on that piece of paper Okay, right, so there we go. A seal mate made of paper. I think you can probably see where we're going with this, can't you? One old orange juice carton. Uh, need to make an hole in it. Like such. And I just want to cut out a piece of this. In the middle there the plastic piece is like it's not sort of dimpled and it's quite smooth and flat so i think it'll do okay right let's pop that back into the recycling bin i'm recycling the recycling i suppose you could say so right that get some sellotape Put my wallet on there, Let's hold that down. Not that there's a hell of a lot of weight in my wallet. Here's the sellotape. I'm just going to stick that down any old who. I don't know if this is going to work and at the end of the day if it needs seals I'm going to put seals on it you know I'm not going to piss about but like I said if it doesn't need money spending I won't spend money and if that makes me a tight ass then I'm a tight ass I'll live with it okay right now we are going to cut out around that OK, 
Okay. And that is my cheap, nasty seal repair tool. I'll clear that up later. My wife is not here, so I can get away with it. Right. I've lost my desert wellies. There they are. Right. Let's try it. No time like the present. So what I've got to do uh, is get myself a screwdriver. One second. Right, I'm back. So we need to pop off this dust seal. This is not the fork seal. Some people think they are, for some strange reason. It's just a cover that, uh, yeah, I can... That's actually, it looks a bit smeggy in there, actually. Right, now what you're supposed to do, apparently, is work that into the seal. That has actually gone in quite easily. And then go round and clean the smeg from around that seal. I'm surprised how easy that actually went in. So I'm going to go round again. And it apparently pulls the lip of the seal out and resets it. So, right, let me get me cloth. Stop back a bit, guys. And then according to the instructions I've seen, you've got to bounce it up and down a bit to sort of reseat the seal. Oh, I reckon that's bloody worked. That is quite incredible. That is bone dry. Right, I'll tell you what, I shall, I shall monitor that over the coming days. Pop that dust cover back in. That's, uh, to say I'm pleased, this is an understatement. If that's actually worked, that's, um, that's incredible. Uh, yeah, uh, fork seals are only about a tenner, but it's the amount of work putting them in. Uh, you have to pull the bottom allen key out the forks, that's a pain in the ass, they sometimes stick. There's a huge allen key in the top there that you have to pull out, and you know, it's doable, it's certainly within my capabilities, and I have the tools to do it. But it's, it's a tenner's worth of seals, in probably. Yeah, it's a tenner's worth of fork seals and a couple of hours at least fitting them in. Hang on, dust seals not quite in properly. But, if I can get away with 
five minutes working a piece of plastic from a milk carton or from an orange juice carton. Liking that. Yeah, I shall, uh, I shall let you know how that goes guys over the following few days, but that looks like to me that that's worked. So yeah, great stuff, absolutely wonderful. Okay, right, we are going to leave it there for the time being. Uh, but right, that's the uh, clutch done, all back together, painted black. A uh, bit of a loop sticking out there, but I think that's going to be okay. It's rooted properly as far as I can see. So yeah, all adjusted up, working well, and a lot smoother than it was. Uh, one final job before I wrap up for the day. I just want to make sure this thing is charging. Uh, I don't know that it isn't, nothing suspects, nothing leads me to believe it isn't, but I got caught out with a CPI, if you remember, that wasn't charging. So, uh, as you can see, I've got my uh, test meter set up, connected to the battery, and you'll see it's reading 12.6 without the engine running. Now, when I start the engine, I expect that to jump to over 13 if it's charging properly. So you can see it's powered down when I took the ignition on. As you can see, that jumped well over 13 when I left it. And power off. Drops down to 12.6 again. Yep, so happy that that's charging perfectly. Good, good. Right, I think we're, uh, we're going to call it there. We're going to wrap up. I've pretty much done everything I can on this bike now uh, until all parts arrived. So thanks for watching guys, um, hit subscribe down in the corner there, help me out and hit the bell uh, that you'll be notified when I'm uploaded more videos. Thank you for your support everybody, uh, Bertie Budget signing off.